Welcome to the Veltens Ice Arena in Winterberg, Germany, as the 2020 calendar winds down to its final Luge World Cup race. It's the BMW Sprint World Cup. Conditions here, as they usually are in Winterberg, cloudy, foggy, warm, intermittent rain. But one good new piece of good news is that this track, which was under such scrutiny and even boycott last season, has held out for some very fast racing all day long, all weekend long here on the Aver Special World Cup. Hi everyone, I'm Tim Singer. I'll be joined in a moment by Team USA's Jason Turdeman as we check out the 15 men athletes who quick earlier today qualified for this final race of the weekend. Keep an eye on Felix Locke. He'll be the last to go. He is perfect this season. In fact, Felix earlier today won his 45th World Cup race. That's a popular number. Earlier today, Francisco Friedrich won a record tying 45th World Cup bobsled race. Also, Egert and Benekin today in World Cup Luge in doubles competition yesterday. Vendel and Arlt won their 45th. Egert and Benekin today. Jason, 45. Magic number, right? Yeah, apparently right now it's a hot, hot, uh, hot toddy. Incredible. Now, Reinhard Eger is the first to go here in this sprint race by virtue of his 15th place finish earlier today, and he needed some help to get into this. He was back in, what, 18th place after the first run? Yeah, it was somewhere 18th or 17th place, and uh, that second run we saw quite a bit of shuffling amongst the men. A couple guys, unfortunately, fell off uh, and out of the bubble here for the sprint. But Reinhardt was, uh, he's reaping the benefits of a, a solid second run in the World Cup competition by getting himself off first here in the sprint. We have seen as Eghard crosses the finish line, we'll give you his time of 36.544. We've seen in the past the first off in the sprint win this competition. I remember at least once Pavlichenko did it in Lillehammer. I'm sure it, that wasn't the only time. Yeah, it's, uh, especially on weather days, when the sprint happens like we have it today with the humidity being so hot. And it doesn't have to just be weather because it, it could be a great athlete having a bad World Cup race and just making it into the field. That's right, and Reinhard Eggers won World Cups before, so. Though I don't think that that run was gonna be good enough to take everybody out. Uh, I think it's definitely gonna take a few guys some spectacular runs to beat him. Well, here's one of the nice stories of the weekend. Andre Monzi of unheralded Ukraine making it into this Sprint World Cup. He finished 14th in the two heat World Cup race earlier today. And that's gotta be a career result for him. I'll look that up before the final Koenigsee race, but yeah, I would be surprised if top 14 wasn't his best ever. Yeah, and right now he's green to red, back into the green, into the red, 1,000th apart from Reinhard Egger. He's gonna, he's gonna really need this, this section of the track to be perfect, and I can hear his feet dropping there in corner 11. And there goes the time. Losing another few hundreds. 124.8 is 77 and a half miles per hour. 36.811 is over a quarter of a second behind Reinhard Egger. Now earlier, uh, just moments ago, we saw Deanna Eitberger move up 10 spots, or at least stay in the leader's box for 10. I don't think we're going to have that same situation with Ager, are we? I'm doubtful, but it's Stranger not things out of the question. In Winterburg, right? Definitely not out of the question. Now on course, Wolfie Kendall. One of several Austrians enjoying a steady, if not spectacular, weekend. They've had some podiums. Nico Gleischer, second earlier today. Stoy Kohler also with a second place finish in the sprint competition. Hannah Prock just off the podium in the sprint. That's right, Madeline Agla missing Madeline out Agla just again. Madeline Agla off the podium yesterday. Austria captured gold at the Olympics in men's luge and really have held it up even since then. The program is just getting stronger. Yeah, the depth within you know a lot of these co countries in multiple disciplines is quite amazing. 2017 world champion Wolfgang Kindle to the finish and he betters his teammate by 36 thousandths of a second. 
five Austrians out of the 15 in today's race. He looks a little disappointed with that. Yeah, I, I don't think you ever see Wolfie looking satisfied until uh, the final results are in. Kendall, he always looks so good on the sled, though. Three-time Olympian. And now we have our first delay of this. Oh, I was looking at the women's start. No delay. On course, <laughs> Roman Ripilov, the defending world champion. Another subpar performance for the Russian earlier today in 12th place. His problems were in the second run, weren't they? Yes, he did. He had some skidding issues in that second run. I think if if, if Roman throws down a solid run, he's one of the, the guys we could see sit in that leader's box for quite a while, six, seven, eight, nine people. But we'd have to see him really open up a lead here on Kindle for that to happen. His teammate and fellow world champion, Samen Pavlichenko, coming up in a bit. Five thousandths, and just like that, red, green, red. We had a quick sneak preview back into green. It's going to be green. tight. It's going to be tight. Look at that. <laughs> that had to have remained, Jason, within a hundredth of a second for the entire final 300 meters. Yeah, that was awesome. Red, green, red, green. Four one thousandths of a second. And that's what makes, you know, that's the draw to this sprint format is how tight and how close these times are at the finish line. Wow, four one thousandths. And Max that's, why, that's why uh, Wolfgang looked disappointed after his own run. The first of three Germans of these 15 athletes, Max Langenhan on course now, his Olympic medal winning teammates Ludwig and Locke still to come. Just a quick update in case you were watching the earlier races, the Russian doubles team, Denisov and Antonov, who I believe finished fourth, they were disqualified after the race for failing the technical inspection. Well, that's unfortunate. Looks like Langenhan's got quite a solid little lead here. Exiting corner 11. Almost a tenth and a half on Repilov. It's beyond solid on this day, on this course. Yeah. Nice. Probably the run of the weekend for Max Langenhan, who earlier today finished in 11th place. And a couple of weeks ago earned his first ever career podium in Altenburg. Yeah, double thumbs up. I don't know if I'm seeing this right, but Jakob Simonek posted that this was the last World Cup of his career on Instagram. Interesting. Well, I, I'm not sure, but I, I'm going to send him a quick note now while we have... Ricks Rositas on course now, the Latvian, who is happy to make it into the sprint because he had had a 16th place finish at the last sprint race. Yeah, and I, you know, he had some small mistakes up top that I think are going to really cost him down here in the time. But this is the kind of format I think would, would help Ricks out, uh, you know, if he had had a, a very solid top to bottom run. But those mistakes up top I think are going to haunt him. Not to mention Max Langenhan just put down a sizzling yes, run. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Rosita's crossing in fifth place, this uphill ramp. There are no brakes on a loose sled. There's just lift up those runners. Yeah, and sitting up's actually a great windbreaker. <laughs> if you do it after you cross the finish line. I've, I've seen a yeah, couple most of important. What's even worse is premature braking and bobsleigh. I think that gets you disqualified. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, tearing up the track before the finish line. I can understand that. Right here, tapping right, right wall just before five. Not not good for building speed. David Gleischer now on course. The fourth of the five Austrians. His brother Nico still to come. Well, actually, and I stand corrected, Mueller. Yeah, he's the third of the fifth. Yeah, we still have Jonas as well. This is your reigning Olympic champion. He's having a cleaner top than we saw from the last sled, but already in the red, and Langenhan had such a great run. 
Well, it's still tight, 800s, and the Austrians have been known to find some speed down below, not like the Latvians or the Germans this weekend, but let's see what happens. Now, losing all sorts of time, now 14. Yeah, we'll be lucky to see him come up in fourth. I'm wondering what Max oh, wow. did. Second. What Max did to uh, put down such a fast run. Uh, I'd like to say he learned a lesson or two from Felix's victory earlier today, but it's not as if the German athletes share their secrets with one another. Right, and I believe Max to be from Oberhof. So yeah, absolutely, yeah. They're definitely not sharing. That's right. Bavaria and, and the Thuringians do not share with each other very much. Alexander Gorbatsevich about to start as we check out this replay of the Olympic champion. Now the Russian on course, coming off of his eighth place finish earlier today. We're midway through this final race of the weekend, the BMW Men's Sprint World Cup. Max Langenhan of Germany with the lead down at the bottom. Great start speed. Not known for having fast starts. Interesting to see his, his speed go so high up top. Battling right now with Long and Han. Only 17 one thousandths at the first intermediate. So we, this should be a good test to see if the track is holding up through the men's heat. Well, five hundredths of a second, that's not, not bad. bad. Let's no, see bad what happens. All. The speed is 83.5, and the time is at least competitive. Eight hundredths back. Lan and Han continues to lead, but at least we're getting a sense, Jason, that his time is gettable. Yeah, for sure, and especially with Felix Locke coming up at the end. You know, there's other guys coming up. Dominic Fischnaller, Jonas Mueller, Nico Gleischer on the podium earlier today. I think some of these guys are going to at least get closer to Max if they don't overtake him. Samen Pavlichenko about to start for Russia. In fact, he's already on course. As we got a little sneak preview of the replay there. Uh, Semen's going to show you guys what you should look like on a loose sled. Great position. His head's going to be back, feet up and pointed. His head might even be too far back where it's underneath the sled. This guy does not look while sliding. The amount of confidence he exudes is incredible. Pavlichenko won the World Cup overall points total two years ago, but that was in part because his teammate Roman Repilov missed one race, the Whistler World Cup. And uh, Pavlichenko finished just ahead of him in the overall points. Three hundred. Yeah, this Great could run. be tight. Speed. Is, I think this would be second. Eighty point six. Just seven hundredths off. It's only eight hundredths separate the top three now, but it is Langenhan of Germany hanging on to the lead with six sleds remaining. And only five thousandths between the Russians in second and third. Russia probably cannot wait to hop in the plane and get home, Jason. But it has been compared to the last few years, a disappointing first half of the season for them. Yeah, but that's, you know, expecting nothing but podium finishes from your, from right. your program. And only so. one victory, and that victory may be their only podium. Now Johannes Ludwig of Germany. Last year, he won the World Cup here in Winterberg. Earlier today, he finished sixth in that same race. By the way, Germany is looking to make it six for six on the weekend here in the Men's World Cup. They've won every competition so far. I feel like, oh, you're talking about this weekend. This weekend. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and the German men are trying to keep all the men's victories for themselves as well here. Based off of the, the carry on the back of Felix Locke and so far through the season. For sure. This looks like Liberty's going to come down in fourth or even behind that. Tenth of a second off the pace, perhaps uh, 14 hundredths. So Max has been there for a while. Langenhan started fifth. He's seen eight now go and fall behind him. Oh no, actually just five. You don't move up spots in a sprint competition. You just hold on to your spot. That's right. It's a great run from Johannes. 
Maybe some small things in transitions we couldn't see, but time just wasn't there. Several seasons ago, Italy's Kevin Fischneller won his first and only World Cup race right here in Winterberg. Earlier today, he won the first heat and had the lead before dropping just off of the podium in run number two, fifth place. Kevin's not known for having a, a, a blazing start time. So I would think that this format kind of favors him a little bit because he's a great slider and he does really good work down the track. Is the closest so far we've seen since Langenhorn went down at 7,000 behind at the first foot. Incredible. But I have seen this grow here to three, yeah, three yeah, hundred. There it is. Exactly. We called that before it popped up. Yeah. So, Fischneller, another one. Langenhorn battling off the Chico, second place yeah. right now. It's going to be a good weekend, all things considered, for the Sioux Tyrolean with a fifth and no worse than a sixth as he heads to the holiday break. Yeah, I'd say it's a great weekend for Kevin. No matter where this ends up, he, I mean, still has the opportunity to rise at least back up to fifth, if not farther up, depending on what comes next. But fifth and sixth, you really can't be too unhappy with that. We've got four remaining. Two Austrians, an Italian, and Germany's Felix Locke, who has been untouchable this year. He'll be the last to go, now on course. Jonas Mueller, who captured a world championship in the sprint event on this course two years ago. Yeah, and you said earlier he was having some of the fastest training times of the week, right? He did, including the fastest, I believe the fastest during the seated training day Friday. Yeah, when Jonas finally found that podium at these worlds, he set him off on a tear. So we know this guy can slide. We know he knows how to make it onto the podium. We know he knows how to win races. Just finding that finding that sliding again well, he's, he's way back he's here well and back yeah so uh, Langenhan has found himself a podium an unexpected podium for Max Langenhan who's staying oh, still got, oh still no he's got, got one more to go right he's yep, one away so got three left this is a third year that uh the, or three times Winterberg has hosted the world championships 1989 1991 and 2019 which is when that man right there Mueller captured his world championship thumbs down for Jonas Mueller. We didn't see a lot of big mistakes, did you, Jason? Uh, I think he messed up somewhere up top with that, the way the splits were looking to me. Mm -hmm. um, if you mess up corner two, there's really no chance. So I think he made, made mistakes before we actually saw what was going on. Dominic Fischneller earlier today, a bronze medal in the World Cup race. A six time World Cup winner during his career. And as I mentioned, Jason, he, he's been struggling with some illnesses over the first few weeks of this season. Yeah, and still having incredible performances throughout. Let's see if he can turn these jets around. He's already 400 is back at the first split. And this is where we've seen Langheim gain so, on so many people. Well, he's done a good job stopping the bleeding, but I think he's going to run out of track here. Will Fischneller be in the top two? No, he drops to third place, doesn't drop, but he ends up here in third place behind his cousin Kevin. It will be another week, another top five for Dominic Fischneller, who will now head home, a long awaited reunion with his girlfriend, whom he hasn't seen in 10 months, and uh, enjoy the holidays before resuming the season. Yeah, Dominic, looked, that run looked great. Just Maybe very, very small things on and off of corners. Well, only Nico Gleischer remains to prevent Germany from sweeping all six races this weekend in Winterberg. Gleischer will need to be down in first place at the bottom and hope that Felix Locke can finish behind him because Germany has the lead, two sleds remaining. Already in the red here. I haven't seen any mistakes yet, so this split will be very, very telling. Already half a tenth. I think, uh, I think Kevin Fishnell found the podium. That's what I'm going to say here. I think Kevin Kevin's going to at least have a bronze. So that'll be a big day for the Sioux Tyrolean and uh, falling off for Nico Gleischer, but still his second place earlier today 
was a career best. So great for Nico Gleischer, great for Kevin Fischneller, and even better for Germany. It's official now, Jason. Germany has won all six races this weekend on their home track in Winterberg. The only mystery that remains, speaking of all six, can Ooh, Felix, Felix. Locke make it six for six to start the season? Well, I said it earlier, he's the best bet. If you bet against him, it's a really bad idea right now. He's been way too hot this half of the season. Well, the, gr uh, the greatest perhaps of all time, maybe if not all time, this past decade, Felix Locke now on course for Germany, the two-time Olympic gold medalist. Fifth fastest speed in his search for race victory number six. Oh, will Max Langenhan get his race victory number one? Langenhan has earned his second career podium and his second in three weeks. Felix, 300s back. Don't count him out. He was really fast down at the bottom in his victory earlier today. Max won right there. Max just won that race. Unreal. This is going to be a bit of a mini surprise as Felix Locke drops Off out the of podium. the podium into fifth fish place. Dollar, fish dollar. So we have two fish dollars on the podium. Dominic for the second time today, but the big story, Max Langenhan, who finished in 11th place in the World Cup race this morning, comes all the way back with a victory, his first on the World Cup. Yeah, congratulations to Max. Uh, Felix just hitting corner seven too early there, or six, sorry. Any mistakes you make? They cost you in a sprint competition, absolutely. Felix Locke's pursuit of the all-time World Cup total wins of 57 is put on hold briefly. He has 45 and holding. Final results, a fish dollar kind of day on the podium behind Max Langenhan. Congratulations to the young German, a former junior world champion, who today wins his first ever World Cup race in this sprint competition. Tim, sixth place was